brothers and sisters, we thank Lord for the opportunity to move on to course 101, the nine fundamental C's. This course is the cure for the ABC syndrome attendance building cash whereby crowd of people going to buildings not knowing they are left from their right and remaining stuck there this course establishes something that should be primary that everyone who is named by the name of the lord should actually review to check whether are we assuming we are in the kingdom are we truly in the kingdom are is our name in the Lamb's book of life or are we assuming and by the grace of the Lord, this particular lesson today, lesson two, we're looking at fundamental C number one, conversion. Conversion. And by the grace of the Lord, is going to be in two parts. This one and the next lesson, we're going to deal with the issue of conversion. It's so paramount. It's so fundamental that it requires that we take time to truly understand the concept and all the scriptures say let's pray father in heaven thank you for the opportunity to receive the cure to the problem that churches are facing across the world today lord we pray that you will enable us to understand this simple but powerful concept and let your name be glorified as holy spirit feeds us with your word in yeshua's name we pray amen one of the most profound statements of Peter was made after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and he was speaking to them in Acts 3, verse 19. You know, when after the Holy Spirit was poured out and then they did the miracle at the beautiful gate and he was speaking to the Jewish religious leaders, he told them, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So that's such a stage for us to understand what conversion is. So by way of definition, conversion is a total change of mind and heart about sin and its consequence. And that simple short form, you know, it can be expanded to now say that it is a real translation or transition from darkness to light, from death in sin and religiosity to new life in Yeshua. And so we need to also understand that religious teachings on conversion have been very deficient. And one of the deficiencies arising from the fact that they take hold of scriptures like Jeremiah, you know, 29, if you seek him and find him, when you search for him with all your heart, you find him. So people are in church because of what they are trying to do, based on what they are trying to do, trying to seek him. And in the process, they don't know that there is a fundamental error in that approach. Conversion is not by our self-effort, so to say, is not the objective factor. It is what the Lord wants to do in us and seeks our cooperation to receive His grace because it's all a work of grace. And we need to understand that this work of grace produces a radical change of behavior because it deals with the very nature of sin humankind was born into this world with. Because in Adam, the gene of sin has been transmitted. And so conversion is what turns around from that gene of sin to the gene of righteousness. And there is a process the Lord wants us to understand. And it's a radical, it's a radical, it's a radical thing. If it happens, it's happened. And it's, the evidence is a changed lifestyle. The evidence is one that, you know, says that the gospel needs to be decorated by behavior. Remember what Titus 2, 15, 11 to 15 says, For the grace of Elohim that bringeth salvation and appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for uh, that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great Elohim and our Savior Yeshua, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous for good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise you. 
It is important that we understand that Yahweh is not in the business of trying to patch up lives of people, patch up lives of sinners and their rituals, do this, do that, try this, try that. No. He offers a radical proposition. It was originally prophesied in the Old Testament, like in the book of Ezekiel, book of Jeremiah, that the Lord will give his people a new heart. And that new heart that was prophesied is speaks of the conversion experience that the Lord wants his people to go through. If you regard it, read Bruce it, uh, number, uh, chapter 10, from verse 14, For by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified, whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after he has said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will pour out my laws into their, I will put my laws into their hearts. And in their mind, I will write them and their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. In other words, there will come a time in the life of an individual where he experiences the love of God to the degree that there is a wiping off of the slate, so to say. And so the Lord is in the business of changing the nature and essence of our beings so that we can become members of his family. His family is holy. So the recreation the Lord offers us is to make us into being like him so that we can live as his children, begotten by him. And the key to conversion, therefore, is genuine heartfelt repentance, you know, Introducing the New Testament, John the Baptist revealed one difference from the religiously themed Old Covenant. I want you to see the picture. In the Old Covenant, the religious leaders invite you to the temple to encounter Elohim. Come there to offer sacrifice. Come there to meet him. And then the priests and intermediaries do their work. But when John the Baptist came up, he introduced a new paradigm. Rather than leading people into the building, he led them out of the building to the wilderness. Why? We're told in Matthew 3, 1 to 2, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Men and brethren, it's so important we understand what that meant. Have a change of heart. The Lord wants to meet us in our hearts. Most of the time we evaluate buildings and venues so highly that we forget that the main theater is a heart. And so when he saw the Pharisees come, he asked them, you generation of vipers who has warned you to flee from the rock to come, bring forth therefore fruit, meet for repentance. When repentance happens in the heart, fruit comes out of it. And that's why when Yeshua himself appeared also, the very first message he gave was still on this issue of repentance in the book of um, John chapter 4 verse 17 and 23 from that time Yeshua began to preach and to say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand verse 23 Yeshua went about all Galilee teaching their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom healing all manner of sicknesses and all manner of these among the people it was all hinged on one thing, a transaction in the heart whereby the old nature was going to be taken away and a new nature will come in. And so it's so important to understand that the Lord is not saying it by, by he's not giving it as a suggestion. He has ordained that the temple of Holy Spirit that he will reside in will be our body. Our spirit man and our being will be the temple. That's one of the reasons why the old temple that Solomon built was allowed, which Herod rebuilt and decorated, it was allowed to, you know, be taken out of the way. Because in Isaiah 66, he say, I'm in heaven. The earth is my footstool. Where is the building you are building for me? But to this man will I look, the one who trembles at my word. The one who fears me. So, conversion, there are three things it is not. Number one, it is not shame or remorse. You did something wrong. You feel bad. It's not what it is. There are a lot of people in churches, what they have is just shame or remorse for something they did bad. 
And then how do you know? They never ever come out of it. They just feel bad about it. They talk about it, but they are still in it. Number two, it's not even something serious, more serious. You committed a particular sin, and maybe the preacher that came for that revival in the church touched on that sin, and you were touched, and even made out a call, you came out. You know what? That is not necessarily conversion. You repented of a particular sin that may not be conversion. So take note. Number three, it's not joining a local congregation or ministry because people can join for various reasons. Some because a man of God is popular, a woman of God is popular, or somewhere is close to their home or one thing or the other. So joining a church is not a necessary a sign of conversion. These things are not. And that's why the Lord says, listen, in Matthew chapter 7, 13, all the way to 23, he says, enter through the straight gate. Walk on the narrow way, because broad is the way that leads to perdition, destruction, and many there be that walk therein. And he said, people can do signs and wonders, prophesy, do miracles, all manner of things on the lives. They say, get up, depart from me, I don't know who you are. Why? They were not converted. Their names are not in the Lamb's Book of Life. So it's important to understand that it is wrong to build one's life in the kingdom and in ministry on any foundation other than a genuine conversion experience. A genuine conversion experience changes who you are on the inside. It's not just about repenting of this sin or that sin, but the very nature of sin that David said he was shaping in iniquity. In sin did the mother conceive him. You know, coming to that realization and, and fundamentally having the Lord deal with it right at the root, that's what conversion is all about. And that's why it's preceded by an understanding of the sin principle that rules man naturally and the rejection of that principle. Conversion, therefore, is based on coming to a place where there is real godly sorrow for the entire nature of sin, sinfulness, and the acts. So both the nature and the act is what is brought. And that's why if you want to understand conversion, you read this passage like Ephesians chapter 2, 1 to 10. It talks about you as a quickened, who were sometimes dead in sins and trespasses. That's the state of our being before conversion. We're dead in sins and trespasses. That's why we can wake up today, do that particular sin. The next day, do that one. The next day, do that one. Because the nature of sin is inherent in the being. And with that nature of sin, one is not really free. Sin can use you like a football, play you anyhow. And you know what? So we're talking about that issue of being quickened to the point of wake, being awake in the spirit to know the state of life and to know how dangerous it is. So there are two principal agents in conversion that is not often discussed by the body of Yeshua. Genuine conversion experience is the same as the true new birth. I'm not talking about the believe it or not, I'm born again. I'm talking about the one in which you meet the Lord, the course of your life is changed. Once you were blind, now you can see. Once you were just walking like a float, someone just some now, you know that you are in the kingdom. You know that you have the DNA of your father inside of you. So when Yeshua was talking about the new birth experience, he said something in, Mark, in John chapter 3, from verse 3. Yeshua answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I saw unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter into his, a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yeshua answered, very well, I say unto you, except a man be born, a second, except a man be born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not what I said unto you, you must be born again. Now listen, that is, gives us a clue that is about being born by the spirit. Our spirit man that was dead in sins and trespasses, that was in a coma, lifeless. He could do anything without feeling it. Go anywhere without feeling it. 
when Holy Spirit comes to do a work in it and it comes alive, that is truly the new birth experience. And that's why the Lord wants us to know that this is something very important. Holy Spirit, without Him, no conversion. Without Him, no new birth experience. So all these religious things, we will do a crusade. You know, you tell story for 40 minutes, 45 minutes, 50 minutes. You tell a story how you made that one a millionaire, how you made that one, how you did that, how you bought this wristwatch for fifty thousand dollars, how whatever, and you say all those stories. People are excited in the soul, in the body, they're excited, laughing. Then the last five minutes say, Well, if you want to be like me, if you want to be one of those who have breakthrough financially, come right here and pray. You invite them. Do you know motives matter? They didn't come to be saved. They came to become rich. They came in response to all that beautiful picture you painted. And men and brethren, that's why it's important that those, if you really want people to be born again, you know that it's a work of the Spirit. That's why we must put prayer. We must pray for souls. Every day pray for souls. Pray for those appointed for salvation. Every day. You don't know what the Holy Spirit uses our prayers to do in the life of people. Holy Spirit does the work. Is He who can change a spirit. First waking it up, convict it, change it from inside. And the next agent of conversion is the word. Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 1, 22 to 23, Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of Elohim, which liveth abideth forever. So what it means, therefore, is you got, we got to understand that with Holy Spirit and with the Word, we are in good state for people to be converted. And scriptures like John three sixteen to nineteen, Romans ten five to thirteen, they are timeless and effective when preaching to sinners. The key thing to bear in mind is that true faith comes by hearing the Word. So if the Holy Spirit energizes us and we speak the word of Scripture. Holy Spirit will use it to do a work in them. We're going to describe that in a moment. And so that's why Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of Elohim. So when you're going on evangelism, don't go tell your people, don't go tell stories about your pastor being a great man or woman of God, being this or that. Don't go preach your denomination. Don't go preach anything. Preach Yeshua. Holy Spirit exalts Yeshua. Anywhere Yeshua is exalted, Holy Spirit can do a work in the heart of people. So if you preach the word concerning what he has done on behalf of humanity, Holy Spirit uses that word to convict of sin or rights of judgment. So in practical terms, what is the process involved in the conversion experience? Number one, a sinner whose conscience is dead or in a coma, is unaware of the filthiness of sin. Born into it, practicing sin as a lifestyle, he or she does not see the need for a savior. That's what David spoke about in Psalm 51, 5. Behold, I was shopping in iniquity, and iniquity in sin did my mother bear me, conceive me. Number two, one who is sent by the Lord, whether in a one-on-one you know, contact or maybe through the mass media, through social media, the word that is declared is what Holy Spirit will use to quicken that dead conscience, to do a work in it, to keep it awake, to make it come alive and see the nature and life of sin, how terrible it is, how it's an affront on the Elohim, how it is like, you know what, living a filthy life. Number three, Holy Spirit in that moment, when there's conviction, reveals Yeshua as the only sacrifice that by his blood on the old rugged cross is the only atonement acceptable to the Father for salvation. And number four, Holy Spirit releases grace for that sinner to believe the report of the word, you know, in the heart. 
and then five Holy Spirit also imparts faith through the word that is hard the sinner believes in the heart that Yeshua died for sin and paid the full price of redemption and confesses with the tongue and believes what the Lord says of Yeshua that he came, he died and he was the father raised him again the person is saved, that's what Romans chapter 10 says, Romans 10 from verse 6 you know, all the way to uh, verse um, 10 I mean, sorry, all the way to verse 13 also Ephesians 2 1 to 8 when you have time read them that's why 2 Corinthians 5 17 says therefore if any man is in Yeshua he's a new creature all things have passed away behold all things have become new once there's a genuine change in the spirit man or heart as a new person who has come out of that experience then at this stage of the conversion experience, Holy Spirit does two simultaneous things in the heart of the newly redeemed. One, he places a seal which signifies divine ownership upon the spirit man of the newly minted saint. That, that seal, you know, we're told in Ephesians 1, 13, in whom you also trusted after you had the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also after you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise this seal is a guarantee that the fullness of Holy Spirit will be received in, in, in due course of time 2 Corinthians 1 21 now he who established us with you in Yeshua and had given and had anointed us is Elohim, who had also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. The word earnest means down payment. It's a down payment. You're going to, if you continue in the faith, you receive the fullness of the Spirit. Now, this seal is a guarantee that will be, one will be resurrected on the day of the trumpet if you finish your pilgrimage and go to sleep. It's also a guarantee if you are alive on the day of the trumpet that you'll be raptured up. Ephesians 4.30 Grieve not the Holy Spirit of Elohim, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Is it talking about the salvation? Experience? No. The day of redemption is when you finish your cause on the earth rim. It's the seal of Holy Spirit that guarantee. And then, second thing it does is it floods the heart with joy of salvation and the assurance that you are saved. No human is qualified to give assurance to another human. It's Holy Spirit that does it. You know, all these things they say, oh, counselor, you give people assurance. No, that's mere word of man. The assurance that works is what Holy Spirit gives. We're told in Romans chapter 8, uh, you know, Verse 16, the Spirit is a bearer witness with our spirit that we are the children of Elohim. If He gives that assurance, you can stand upon it. You will never be moved. So it's important we emphasize and emphasize this again and again that conversion is a translation from a sinner to a saint in a split moment of time. It's an encounter. It's a tipping point. And when we understand this and preach it again, People are not going to come to church and be, you know, just living in sin and say they are Christians because they give tithe, they give offering. No, it is the name, it is what makes one's name to be on the Lamb's Book of Life. And once it is there, it is very important that we know that assurance that you know you are connected to heaven is an extraordinary blessing. And the Lord wipes out the past. It's as if one never sinned. That's what Micah 7, 18 and 19, who is an Elohim like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passed by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He retained not his anger forever because he delighted in mercy. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. Thou will cast all their sins into the depth of the sea. Is forgiven, is forgotten. It's only in the mind of Satan that the sins of the one that is born again stays. Only in the mind of Satan. That's why he's accused of the brethren. And that's why brothers and sisters let's just learn to receive brethren and love on them and not forget this neat picking our eyes trying to look for things to look for. You are doing the work of Satan. 
you have been recruited by Satan when you become an accuser of the brethren. There are things are best left for the Most High. And when we have this attitude, we're going to see a massive strength come. Because when people walk in justification, they are not going to have issues with their past. There's so much people carrying baggage of their past, little thing, past, 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 past. Let me tell you, you got no past. Your past was wiped away by the blood. There is no past. Is the enemy that tries to use that to torment you, try to use it to suggest to you, you are not, if you are converted, your name is in Lance Book of Life, finish. There's no record because he's cleansed, he's purged, he's purified. Brothers and sisters, you're now a member of the family of Elohim. And without assurance, without justification, you can truly live the righteous life because the righteous life is a gift for the Father, for those whose sins are forgiven. With that, I want to encourage you, please, can you share this video? And don't stop today. Tomorrow, we do part B of conversion so that we can get it. It's such a fundamental truth. It's such a basic truth. And it's one of the lost truths in practice because people are doing more of church membership, more of church growth, in quotes, based on the principle they learned from California. People just looking how to get people into a building. You know what? If, they are, if people pack a building, there is a church within the church. The church of those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That is the true church. And the question is you, brothers and sisters, you're listening now on Facebook. Are you converted? On YouTube, are you converted? It's not something you should take a chance with. This is very life. Everything the Lord can do with you or for you is all going to be hinged on the reality that you are genuinely converted. You encounter the Lord. There's a change of your life. And you know what? By the grace of the Lord, you can literally face Satan and any power of darkness. So please share this video and make sure that other people are able to receive the same truth. Let a conversation begin. Take it on Facebook. Take the points the Lord minister to you. Raise conversation. Try to see how we can raise conversation in this matter so that people are not just members of churches, members of men and women of God, but not members of Yeshua. Conversion makes you a member of Yeshua Hamashiach. By way of assignment, Number one, what is conversion and which scripture best illustrates it? Two, outline the three things that many do but which do not make up conversion. It's not really conversion, but three things popular people do. Three, in what way can Holy Spirit and the Word be deemed as principal instruments of conversion? Cite at least one scripture each. Then four, what is the process through which a sinner is converted? We covered all this in the study today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to receive these things that you are releasing to us. We pray that these words have not fallen on empty ground, but they have fallen on fertile soil to bring forth fruit, 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold, to your own glory and praise. Father, have your way and glorify Yeshua. Thank you for the answer. I pray that no one who hears this word today shall go back without allowing Holy Spirit to do what he ought to do in every heart. We give you praise. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching. And we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook, Monday all the way to Sunday, every day, by about 10.30 a.m. UK time. And that's the same at Nigerian time. And you, it's either Apostle George, Monday to Friday, uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace, uh, Friday to Sunday. And then in the evening of Sunday, we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6, after 6, another one up to 7. So please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it. We also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks 
this course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want. You can also, if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class, you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it. You can also subscribe to our channels. This YouTube, gsom.tv and we also have a Telegram channel, gsom media. You can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.